Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim or Sim Naya. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So there is this video I came across about, about a biracial woman actually saying that uh, she is not being recognized in black community and all that, that uh, she feels like she is uh, finding it hard to like, you know, have a stand in black community that most of the things like, you know, that they do that they do not invite her and the rest of it and a lot of people really have a lot to say about that and i am asking why is it that I, your voice is not being heard and a lot of people like you know have so many things to say some are like saying that it is unfair if she's not being recognized and all that that she deserves all the recognition and some are saying that she has really not been super nice and all that like you know and uh that she deserve whatever she's getting. So I see a lot of people saying that uh, that she is a sharp, like you know she's a champion, but uh, she's also arrogant, and uh, you know, and people disagree with her sometimes and all that. And I think it's okay for people to disagree, we disagree to agree, you know, sometimes. But uh, there is something, something may have happened, something may have like you know, made people not want to work her in the in, in space and all that. But I think. When a black woman is doing great, she deserves her flowers, and uh, I love giving people their flowers when they deserve it, you know. So, uh, so some people are saying, is it arrogance or confidence? I have no idea, but uh, let's get into this video and find. I just want to say something. If it wasn't for y'all, I would really. If it wasn't for y'all, I would really think that I ain't doing shit. <laughs> Because the industry I'm in does not recognize me. And to be clear, I'm speaking about the black spaces in the industry I'm in. Because y'all know I don't give two dams about any of these other spaces. But I'm, I, the black spaces is what I'm referring to. Which is largely in part why I've realized like I need to shift out of this industry. You know, like I don't get invited to Essence Women in Hollywood. I've never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. I've been, I've been nominated for an Image Award. Never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. Never been honored at Black Girls Rock. Like, <laughs> I've hosted these events. You know what I'm saying? Um, I literally hosted the BET Awards in 2020 in my house. And I was not invited to the BET Awards since. So I just want to thank y'all for always reminding me that I, I really am valuable. Because the game and the industry that I've been in has never let me know. If it wasn't for y'all, I would really think that I ain't doing shit. So that's a clip of Amanda Seals complaining and venting about not being invited to the NAACP awards and just, I guess, black awards in general. Um, and she claims that if it wasn't for us, the general audience, I guess the black audience, she wouldn't realize, uh, you know, that she was important or in the industry or what have you. And I call bullshit on the whole thing with Amanda and I'll tell you why. A long time ago, before Amanda became famous, before she got into the industry, I want to say 10, maybe 12, 15 years back, what I know of her is that she was painting. She was like an artist who painted um, art pieces. And she had it where, you know, if you gave her a piece of your clothing or a pocketbook, she would paint some artwork on it, like wearable or designable art. So I um, purchased um, her services and I had a pocketbook. Um, I sent her one of my pocketbooks so she could paint on the pocketbook and do some sort of art piece. I thought she was very talented and creative in that aspect with her artwork. But here's where things went wrong. And before I go any further, I have the email saved of the email exchange between myself and Amanda. If she dare tries to lie, I have receipts. Amanda um, took a really, really, really long time um, with returning my bag to me. She promised me one, you know, one time frame. The bag will be done during this time and I'll send it back. And this is New York. You know, I'm in New York. She's in New York. So it's not like she's shipping me the bag from across, uh, you know, from another country. But she, she gave me this time frame that the bag will be finished where she's painting on the bag. It's, um, um. Uh, Emilio Pucci bag I sent her um, and it, it was like this butter soft leather beautiful lamb leather 
beautiful, gorgeous bag, and I had her paint on one side of it. She painted some sort of mosaic piece on it. And um, she did not deliver on time. And I had to keep emailing, when is my bag going to be ready? When is my bag going to be ready? And she kept giving me, you know, another time frame, and she didn't meet that time frame. Then she started getting a fucking attitude because I kept asking her, where is my bag? I finally received my bag after being strung along um, with poor customer service. And mind you, I paid for the, the product and I'm just sitting, waiting, waiting, waiting after, you know, she, she promising to deliver and it not being delivered at a certain time frame. But, you know, the bag came out nice. It is what it is, it, you know, but I'm glad I saved those receipts. I have that email saved. The bottom line is this. What I saw of her behavior behind closed doors, and this is before she became famous, she has a nasty disposition about her. She's sitting up playing victim and entitled to why she's not being invited to the NAACP awards, but there's a lack of accountability for her, her own behavior, okay? which I believe is narcissistic and narcissists are delusional. Amanda comes off to me as very delusional because the things that she's accusing, you know, the black industry, the entertainment industry of doing to her, she's done to people herself. And I'm one of those people. I don't appreciate how I was treated, her tone in those emails, this entitlement of like, wait, bitch. It was very condescending. It was like, hold on, you know, I'm the artist here. Very overinflated ego. I told you I would have it ready by this time. Okay, well, the time is here and it still ain't ready. And you're still talking down to me like you have, you, you're superior to me. So the things that she's accusing the, the entertainment industry, especially the black industry of doing to her, she's doing to people behind closed doors. I definitely have receipts. I dare her. I dare her to come for me. And another thing that I want to say about Amanda sitting up venting and complaining about not being invited, sis, you are already in the fucking industry. You already, you're in there. So what, you, you, you don't get invited to certain things? Why do you care? Are you seeking validation? Because that is screams insecure. I want to be invited and I'm mad that I'm not invited. I need to be validated. So why didn't you invite me? Which says to me, you know, you're not this strong sister that you think you are. Your insecurities are screaming loud. I want to just, you know, acknowledge that I'm not, you know what, Amanda, I'm not sensing that you have a strong sense of spirituality because a sister like me who has a very close relationship with God, I don't go around asking or begging or wondering why I don't get invited to certain events. See, when, when you're called by God, when you're chosen, you don't need nobody's fucking validation. You don't ask why you're not invited to certain tables. Maybe God's protecting you from those tables. So for you to come on a social media platform and complain and vent with this, you, you're entitled. You're already in the fucking industry. Okay, so the NAACP didn't invite you. Go to somebody else's event. I'm sure you're invited to so many other things and you're crying about the NAACP awards. That's entitlement. Nobody owes you. And there's millions of black actors and actresses fighting to get to your spot. Where is your humility at? You've made it. You've gotten your foot in the door. You're there. And there are people fighting to get to your level. And all you can do is fucking complain. Self-entitled, overinflated ego, delusional. And don't forget, there's people that know the, the real you. There's people like myself who have dealt with you before you became famous and you had a nasty, nasty fucking attitude behind closed doors where nobody was looking except for God. Humble yourself, Miss Amanda. If you wasn't invited, maybe it's God protecting you from being there. So I question your spirituality and your insecurities. I said what the fuck I said. Out of all the topics that is floating around on the internet, the one that I want to talk about the most is what's going on with Amanda Seals. So if you have not heard, Amanda Seals feels like she's been blackballed from Black Hollywood, and I can see that 100%. If you look at her resume, you have to give it up. This is impressive. The issue with Amanda Seals is that she keeps it too real. And a lot of people say that they like honesty, but they really don't. A lot of Black elites in Hollywood like to play the game of Hollywood 
and they're okay with playing it by white rules. Amanda Seals doesn't seem like the type of person that want to do that. Nothing personified this more than when I saw her cast it on the reel. I was like, this is not going to end well. Get her out of there now. Not because I did not like her. Not because I don't think that she should be on daytime TV. Because you're sitting next to phony love. This is not going to work. As a fan of The Real, I knew that this was not going to work because The Real was very fake. It was very fraudulent. Although we need somebody like an Amanda Seals, everybody can't take her. Everybody cannot take brutal honesty. People like to pretend that they can, but they really can't. And the go-to defense is, oh, she always has an issue with everything. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're so content with how everything goes. Maybe you're okay with going along to get along, and she's not. She's not for everybody. She talked about how she has never been honored at Black Girls Rock. For as long as she has been put in the work, she should have been. How she has never been invited to Essence Fest. She should have been. How she was nominated for an NAACP award, but wasn't even invited to the award show. She hosted the BET Awards in 2020. Has never been offered to come back as a guest. It is not too late to make this right. And honestly, all of these different publications and black companies should be ashamed because how are you playing by white rules at a black business? I believe that this massage noir is coming from black people, which makes it even more insidious. No matter how you may feel about her personally, you can never say that she was wrong. Y'all are always talking about giving somebody their flowers while they're here. Y'all have closed her off from the garden. It is not too late to make this right. Y'all need to appreciate it while y'all still got her. Out of all the topics that is floating around on the internet, the one that I want to talk about the most is what's going on with... They don't like stuff. They don't like people like that, regardless. And then considering the fact that, you know, she's a woman of color, and um, she don't let her color be a problem. She basically wants you to look at her as an individual. When I see her, you know, coming out and speaking her truth, it was the same thing with Tarjay Henson when she was speaking her truth. And now all of a sudden, they want to make her feel happy and give her accolades because she should have received a long time ago. And then for her to pretty much be not really feeling it, like she said she wasn't going to do anymore, I don't blame her. And this is what they do, you know? Because if it's multiple women like Amanda Seals, Sajay Hensley, and many others who pretty much are coming out and saying, but look at the people that before, because Viola Davis has said that. And then because she started receiving all these attitudes and everything, she's still saying that. You know, so, you know, and then not only that, she's getting blacklisted by her own people. You know, people are blacklisting her. And that's kind of messed up because you can expect that from the other side, but not really from your own side. But you know what? I would tell people, there's no such thing as closed doors. Closed doors is closed doors because you want it to be closed doors. Okay? If you're a person that's not going to be afraid, to go through the back, but I don't prefer the back. I like to go through the front. So most likely with all the talents that she has, she could pretty much do her thing. There's no stopping. We're in 2024. If doors of certain people don't want to open for you, then you make your script. You be your own producer. You be your own, your own director. Regardless if you need money in a source there's many ways that you could put your thing in production. There's other places that you can go that's in free ads, and she knows it. I mean, she has her own podcast. She's a singer, she's a songwriter, she's a producer. So go ahead and do your thing, okay? It's gonna be a hard lot of work and hard dedication to go ahead. And the way she has so much ambition 
and I'm talking about Amanda Seals, and even Tajay Hensley, they can turn around and make and move it. Don't just sit there and be stuck. I understand you want to voice your opinion. That's right, but go ahead. And let me tell you something. What the problem is, they can't close those doors. Okay? They want to monopolate the doors. They want to basically control the doors. There's no such thing as gatekeeper. That's what they want you to believe. You can still open those doors. And shout out to her. So I want us to be very for real about something real quick. The other day I saw this post about Amanda Seal speaking out about not getting invited to black industry event, award shows, festivals, etc. And what was so interesting to me was the amount of people that were taking up for these institutions. These same institutions that we know for sure blacklist black people. The same institutions that gatekeep. The same institutions that a war show after a war show invite and honor rapists, abusers, scammers. Pick something. But their line is drawn with Amanda Seals. Now me, I don't follow Amanda. I haven't followed Amanda. And it's for one reason and one reason only. A few years ago, she went after Tamir Rice's mom, Samaria Rice, and called her a clout chaser. Pretty much saying that this woman, a mother of a slain child who was unalive by police, was being a clout chaser because she was calling out wannabe activists like Sean King. So from then, I was like, you know what? There's nothing really from Amanda that I need to see. But that does not negate this sister's resume. That does not negate that this woman has been on television since the 90s. Nickelodeon, MTV, etc. And let's not forget that one of those institutions that she named that she's never been invited to nominated King Conebread herself for an image award. Now, I don't know her personally, but what I do know is the amount of times that we sit on social media and that we say that we're tired of sellout, that the gatekeepers need to go, we applaud Taraji for calling the things the thing. But Amanda Seals is miserable and needs to touch some grass. And although I do not necessarily agree with everything that she has to say, she says the things with her chest. So which way do we want it? I just want to say something. If it wasn't for y'all, Hey Amanda, we'll probably, let's probably never make it to Amanda, but I've been watching you since you was a kid. We were, since we were kids. I want to make sure I've, I've been, I've been knowing, knowing who you were since my brother and me, right? And I, I just want to know what happened to you. At what point did, did, did you become damaged? Who, I don't want to say who hurt you. Like, you know how women say that to men? When when they, a man decides to stand up for himself and knows his worth, and they say, no, no. I want to know who actually hurt you to a point to where you're just not likable. You look so fucking beautiful. But then when you open your mouth, it's like sewage. No tact at all. It feels like you constantly have to get over on people on what you have to have the last word. It gives the most angriest black woman on the planet. Yeah, you are. And I hate that for you because I've seen some, I've gone back and look over your accomplishments. I'm like, oh, this woman has done some cool shit. I want to like her so much with all my heart. But then you open your mouth. Not to mention what you did to Myron. What you did to that football player and then back backtrack but didn't tell the truth. Just <coughs> I think if you would have just came out and said, look, I lied, I'm sorry. I was I got my feelings hurt and I did some evil destructive shit. People gravitate to people who tell the truth. Not your truth, the truth. People hate you for that. Do you know that? People hate you for that. Women hate you for that. There's times you go through all your comments on videos that you make, and women hate you for doing that to another black man. And then you blame black men for every fucking thing. And it's just like, God damn it, I want to like you. Like, I want to save your spirit, cause you got fire, you got call to act, you got it all. But you're not treated like that A-list celebrity because you're quite frankly, you're not. It takes a little, you have to be likable to be an A-list celebrity. And you're not. You, the shit that come out your mouth, 
Like, you don't check with your publicists and your PR people before you open your fucking mouth? Y'all don't understand. You can be the most beautiful person in the world. I don't like Kim Kardashian. I don't. I don't care how beautiful people think she is. She opened her fucking mouth and it's just dumb, airheaded shit. For years. Did she use black men to... I'm not even going to go into all that. Do you know why people respect Felicia Rashad? Like, Felicia Rashad back in the day was fine as fuck. She was the most beautiful person on the planet. She wasn't super light-skinned. She wasn't super dark-skinned. She was right smack dab in the middle. The way she dressed, the way she held herself, the way she spoke, even now. Man, she in movies and she dies, I cry in real life. Felicia Rashad is like the pinnacle of woman. Like, you have a Mount Rushmore of black women. It's She's up there with Angela Bassett. I've heard that woman, Angela, open her mouth one time at Disney. And it was just a sweet, she could be as me. Look, she got her point across. She made some very important points when she speaks. And it's just loving soliloquies and just, yes, ma'am. She make you want to say, yes, ma'am, go give her a hug, rub her fucking feet, go buy her some, cook her some dinner, and then can I do anything else for you, queen mother? We don't have those women anymore. I don't care if it's a fucking act. That's when she speaks, everybody listens. Same thing with Felicia. Them women are getting up in age and wisdom. But if I had a choice of talking and dating you, young, fire full of fire, disrespectful as fuck, or going with like an older, even an older Felicia Rashad, I'd pick her a million times over over you, but you don't want to hear it because you think anything that comes to you as constructive criticism is damaging black women. You try to gather all the black women in the world when people are just attacking you directly because they're trying to correct your fucking behavior, you fucking moron. God, I hate when people do that. Someone tells me, hey, Scott, you're fucking up, you're doing this, that, and the third. I'd be like, let me think on it for a couple of days. Oh, shit, they might be right. I might be fucking up. Let me go ahead and or apologize for some shit I, you know, I ain't intend to do. And come on, man. I want to like Amanda Seal so bad, but it's you. It's not us. It's not the world. The whole world. You look at all your comments. The only people that are like, you know, picking you up and agreeing with half the shit you say are other are other narcissistic bullshitting women. Heavy, hardcore feminists that think anytime you say anything to try to correct a woman in general is an attack on black women. The ones that believe the, the fucking brick lady. Now that we got evidence that the bitch lied, where they all at now? It's, it's so... God, I want to like you so bad because I see what you're trying to do. I heard you got thrown out of a party. Cause nobody, nobody fucking like you. Be sweeter. Oh, I shouldn't have to be. Well, yes, you do. You want somebody to fucking like you and give you more opportunities. You have to bend to that will. Be nice, bitch. Jesus fucking Christ. You think I could just roll up in there and just slap every bitch on the ass and, and expect them to want to fuck me? Oh, it's a certain level that I can do that up to. <laughs> it's true. I can just, you know, in high school, you know, college, kind of the man, kind of not. You know, there's a level there. You trying to do it on a A-listing level. And those people should just be sweet. Practice at home being nice. Practice that, that feminist bullshit. Keep that shit to yourself unless you're amongst your peers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm hearing too many people who once fucked with you and then don't fuck with you no more. I don't know whatever happened, you know, while you was on TV and stuff and why you're not anymore. I hope it's just because it was the creative change of where it needed to go. I hope it wasn't your mouth and your attitude. 
at the end of the day, here's a whole man trying to tell you exactly from a human perspective, not just because I'm a black man. You're just not nice. And nobody wants to be around people who are unpleasant and then blame everybody for their problems. I, and I couldn't trust being around you. If they said we were going to go see Amanda Seals, I would need to have four girls with me and two guys and all got their phones on because of what you did. Because you're good at lying. What you did to the ex-football player, I could never trust you. And that's a big reason why you got a lot of people saying fuck you. Now, I know this may never get to her, but if I'm wrong, anybody, let me know in the comments. Just let me know. I'm, op I'm open to, to discussion. I'm not an asshole. So this is all I got from this. At first, I was like, something must really be wrong. If you have been a great support to black community, there is something that I have found out over time about black people and all of that. I mean, when they want to support you, they support you with all their heart, except you have done something wrong. And when you do something wrong, trust me, it is hard to gain their love again. And like I am saying, I heard a lot of people like, you know, from what I have heard, from the stitches and also i took my time to go to the comment section to hear like you know see what people got to say about that and uh, some people are not finding it funny some think like she has like you know she has uh betrayed black people sometime and all that and uh some people are not like you know having it and for her to come out to say that she has not been uh like you know invited by black people like you know n a w a c p and all that and that you know uh i don't know but sometimes uh you just don't get invited to some certain places no matter how, how high class you are i'm not trying to defend anything and all that because sometimes you tend to like overflock some certain things and all that there are some places maybe probably they do not want it to come and all that and maybe you, you like she according to her she has been a great uh, spokesperson from what she is saying to black community. She's biracial, right? And uh, she wants to be recognized in black community. From what I can see, she feels that she is doing a whole lot. Uh, I mean, like, you know, trying so hard to uh, to be part of black community, but she is not being recognized and all that. And uh, a lot of people are also trying to tell her that uh, you have did some, like, you know, silly things in the past somewhere, like, you are being recognized and all that, like, you know, uh, that she should continue keep do keep doing what she's doing and all that. And she is kind of saying that uh, uh, she has to go to where she is loved and all that. And uh, I don't know where she is loved and the rest of it. So the math I am really adding up and uh, I really need, like, more clarification to understand, like, you know, if they, maybe she has done something that warrants people avoiding her or maybe she has really not been super great to black people or maybe that is something you know i know my people a lot i, I so i feel like something is not so right and i hope i am able to know why uh something is not so right so maybe yeah i think yeah i don't know i feel something is not right and i hope i am able to find that thing and i hope if you know let me know in the comment section let's find out why she is saying that she is not loved in black community and that she needs to go to where she's loved and all of that you know that's all i got to say let me know what you all think in the comment section i'll see you all in my next video bye for now